Alright, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Now, today we're going to discuss further into polar coordinates and now look at example three of the area series, which looks at, in this example, the intersection points of two curves, which is really important, uh, as I explained in my earlier video on the area bounded by two polar curves. So let's solve this example, which states find all points of intersection of the polar curves r equals cosine 2 theta and r equals to 1 half. Yeah, so let's look at the solution over here. So we want to find out which points uh, they both intersect with these two curves. So uh, looking at the solution, well recall from my earlier video on determining the area bounded by two polar curves that in polar coordinates curves can reach an intersection point at different quote times. So make sure to watch that earlier video. Thus, we may not be able to find all the intersection points by simply solving the equations, in which case we would need to graph the curves or rewrite the equations in a different equivalent form as I'll show in this particular video. So setting the two equations equal to each other and then solving what we get is, well, if we just set these two equal to each other, we get, for example, r equals 1 half equals to cosine 2 theta. And in this particular video, I'm just going to assume the domain is between, theta is between 2 pi and 0 like that. Yeah, just to get a full 360 degrees uh, uh, angle around. So now when we set this equal to it, first recall the way to find the exact trig ratio of this one. A good way is by drawing an isosceles triangle where this length is 2, this length is 2, everything is is 2 as well, so we split that in half, 1, 1, and that's only where all these angles need to add up to 180 degrees or 60 degrees total or in radians pi, so divide these all by 3, so pi over 3, pi over 3, this one's going to be split into pi over 6. So then the cosine of this, this ratio, 1 over 2, that's cosine like that, so then cosine of, yeah, cosine of, I'll just write pi over 3, equals to 1 over 2. So that is what 2 theta equals to from this uh, easy to remember uh, exact trig ratio. Yeah, so thus what we have, whoops, yeah, whoops, so let's put this here. So thus we have, uh, now if we were to draw that angle across, for example, this is in the first quadrant for uh, pi over 3. And since we're dealing with 2 theta, so we'll write here, pi over 3 equals to 2 theta here. Or I'll just rewrite it. Yeah, 2 theta equals to pi over 3. So if you look at this uh, ratio, this right angle, uh, we have 1 adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 2. And now the next time we get this ratio 1 over 2, well, we have to go over here. And that's because, well, if you look at this, that's pi over 3. So that we have a positive adjacent. If we go left, we get a negative one. It's always positive the hypotenuse. And then we rotate this across. This is the angle, and that angle is um, is we have. Well, we subtract two pi minus pi over three. This is just multiply three over three. That's six minus pi over three. That equals to five. You have minus pi, so five pi over six is that angle. But this is ro rotating two pi or two theta equals to two pi. So we need to actually rotate twice around. And whoops, this is not a 3, this is a, uh, I mean, it's not a 6, it's a 3 right there. Yeah, so thus I put a note here. We need to loop twice because the above figure is for 2 theta and we are looking for the range uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, basically, i.e. at uh, 2 uh, theta equals to 2 pi, so at a full uh, loop around there, 360 degrees. Since we're dealing with double the angle, if we just divide that out, theta is just equal to pi. So, but we're looking for theta between zero and two pi. So this needs to go. Uh, we need we need to go all the way to two theta equals to four pi around. So we loop it around twice, etc. Yeah. So thus the intersection points are at well. Uh, I'll write the better at sign. So at 2 theta equals 2, now we have these two angles, pi over 3, and then we also have 5 pi over 3. But we also need to loop around it uh, the second time, so that means uh, we can just add 2 pi to those, so pi over 3 
plus two pi, and then pi, five pi over three uh, plus, uh, again, two pi, like that. And then we could just add these up. You notice the common denominator. We'll always multiply three over three, three over three here, so that this becomes six plus pi. That's, uh, that, yes, yeah, six plus one, that's seven. This one will have uh, six plus five, that's 11. So we get two theta equals to pi over three and five pi over three. And now we add those up. That's seven pi over three. And then this one, five pi plus six pi. When you multiply those out, 11 pi over three. But yeah, these are, we're dealing with two uh, theta there. So thus we bring this down into theta is divided by two. So we get five over, I mean pi over six. Five pi over six, three divided by two is, um, yeah, three times two is six. So then we have five pi over six, seven pi over six, and then 11 pi over six like that. And there is our intersection points. Yeah, so we have four points here, but the problem is when we graph these curves, we obtain four additional intersection points that aren't accounted for there. Here I use the Desmos calculator to make this graph right here. So we have r in, uh, equals cosine two theta in red. Then we have r equals one half, which is just a circle in blue like that. So notice the intersection points. We have one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven, eight. So we have additional ones. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, four additional ones that we didn't account for. And this other stuff I graphed, this one is just the same one here, but as a uh, parametric uh, equation or par or set of parametric equations. So we have this uh, r times cosine, and then we have r times sine. So make sure to watch my earlier video on parametric equations or polar to parametric equations. And I'll put that in the description below. But I replace it with a so that we could change this value of a and we get points instead. So this is this point here in green, and then you could move it in. It changes, etc. Also, what I've done here is I've graphed the r1 in parametric so that we have this one in blue there and it graphs around the circle. But what I've also done is I've made a negative, this one is for r equals negative one half. To show you, we could write the same blue circle in a different equation and I'll get to that in a bit. And that point is in black right here. Yeah, so to get the other four intersection points, because we have eight, we can solve for the other four intersection points by symmetry of the graphs above, or even by noticing that the equation r equals one half can also be written as r equals negative one half, because remember, that's just radius of one half, and then, or negative one half, it's still gonna be a full circle when you loop around it. Then we can set that equation equal to r equals cosine two theta. So let's look at symmetry first. So by symmetry, we can just solve it from the above graph. So by symmetry, we can look above here and notice that our four points, we have pi over six, five pi over six, and then seven pi over six, 11 pi yeah, over six. So this pi over six, that is basically, yeah, 30 degrees. Because remember, pi over three is 60 degrees, and then that needs to be, uh, yeah, that needs to be yeah, 30 degrees and a half. And that's this point right there. So if we loop around this like that, I'll just draw this. This is at pi over six. So by symmetry, you could just see that this all needs to be, well, this angle, well, this point right here we want to get, this from here to here is also pi over six. And now the other points we have, this is five pi over six. Yeah, that one must be because uh, six over six is just pi, uh, that's just one. So that needs to be this point across there. So we know this point and this point. And we also know this 11 pi over six, that's almost a two. So we know this point and this point as well, this is gonna be the seven pi over six. So we know these two. So the ones we wanna find out is this one above, this one, that's wrong this right here, like that. Again, these are all pi over six by symmetry. You could see it's all symmetric. And then we wanna find also this point and this point like that and like that. So to solve these angles, well, this one's pretty easy because we know that from all the way, looping all the way around here, that's just going to be three pi over two or 270 degrees. 
and the angle from here to here, that's just pi over two. So to solve this, yeah, for these four additional points are, well, by symmetry, theta equals two, we could just go from pi over two here and then subtract uh, pi over six. So we have, or, or, or add. So if we subtract, we get here. If we add, we get over here. So we get pi over two plus or minus pi over six as well as three pi over two plus or minus pi over six by symmetry. So then if we multiply this to get the common denominator, three over three, so the bottom is six. This one as well, three over three, so we get six at the bottom. We have here, this equals to three pi, I'll go minus pi is gonna be two pi over six. And then if we add, uh, add a uh, pi, so three plus one, that's gonna be four pi over six like that, and then this part right here, three times three is nine, plus, so I'll just go subtract first, subtract by one, that's going to be eight pi over six, and then we finally have, if we add nine plus one, that's 10 pi over six. And then we could just uh, simplify this further, so theta equals to two over six, that's just gonna be pi over three, four over six, that's two pi over three, and then eight over six, that's four pi over three. Divide those ones by two, five pi over three, like that. And you could see that that's pi over three, that's the first one here. So from here to here is just pi over three. Yeah, et cetera. So those, we have those four points by symmetry, like that. And yeah, let's call this what method number one. So this is by one. And then the second one, we could just set that equal to r equals negative one half, and then yeah, set that equal to this, r equals cosine two theta, and solve it in a, yeah, basically a different equivalent form of it to see if those match up, and in fact they do. So if we look at number two, uh, setting, um, yeah, setting r equals to negative one half to equal to cosine two theta. Well, what we get, because there's, there's a negative there, so now the quadrant's gonna be changed, so what we end up having is uh, the ratio is like this, the triangle's gonna be on this way, it's this side because we have a negative one, we have a two there, so then this is going to be now our pi over three, because remember the exact trig ratio from above, so that means this angle right here is two theta equals to, well, pi uh, minus, yeah, pi, which is 180 degrees, minus is pi over three, like that, times by three over three, we get now two pi over three. And likewise, to get the other other one, we can get just go over here because we also have a. I'll write this a bit neater, like that. It's also like that. We have two. So we also have a negative one over two adjacent over hypotenuse ratio. And again, this is just uh, pi over three. Put a negative one, pi over three, like that. So again, this one now we could do pi. I'll just put this angle there, and this angle there. This is going to be pi plus pi over three, this equals two, and I'll move this over three over three, and that just equals to four pi over three. But then we also need to loop this around twice because we're dealing with two pi, so we need to go all the way around, etc., and then add these, uh, add two pi to it. So thus, two theta equals two, so between zero, between theta is between zero and two pi, we have two pi over three, four pi over three, as well as, as well as, well, both of these, two pi over three plus two pi, and then we have over here, four pi over three plus two pi, like that. And again, we could just multiply common denominator. I'll move this over two pi, so three over three. This one, three over three. This equals to now two pi over three, four pi over three, and then right here, that's gonna be, well, six plus two is eight pi over three, and then we have six plus four, that's 10 pi over three. Yeah, so this is, well, two pi, so to get pi, we go down here, so theta equals to just divide everything by two, so two pi over six, like that. Or actually, instead of just doing that, we could just, uh, well, cancel the twos there. So we have pi over three, four cancels with two, so we have, uh, yeah, that's pi over three like that. 
Now we have 2 pi over 3, just divide the 8, that's going to be 4 pi over 3, divide the 10, that's 5 pi over 3, like that. Now we can double check uh, from our symmetry one, so we have, five, uh, yeah, we have pi, 2 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So pi, 2 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, all over 3, like that, so this is check mark, and this is check mark like that and then uh, to show you why that works with the r equals negative one half well let's open up the decimals calculator right here and we'll yeah, just see how it works and i'll play the animation it's pretty cool so this decimals calculator is quite amazing so let's click here projector mode let me just click the projector okay so that's darker like that so again this point yeah so what i've done here is uh you could just hide these move this like that Again, these are just the points, the green ones there, as you can see. This one's over there. This one's over here on the negative side. And then when you play it, notice what happens. So the red, yeah, so that point like that, so it intersects right there. I'll slow this down. Just, yeah, okay. I'll slow it down. So as you can see, this intersects at this point. That, that one is r equals positive one half. And then, yeah, so that's at this angle right there. And then when it goes backwards, it intersects right here at r equals negative one half. And then when it goes here, yeah, so we have the top parts is, is for the negative r equals one half. And then it goes to here on the on the horizontal one for the positive. So this is a quite amazing animation right here. And then it intersects with this. And then intersects on the negative side. On the, this is absolutely amazing. So we have one, two points. Yeah, so the vertical ones, is, it intersects with the black dot. That's the r equals negative one half and then the purple dot right there at the positive one so that's there is a visual representation of why it works with both of the equivalent uh, equations r equals positive one half and r equals uh, negative one half speed this up this is absolutely amazing let's do it faster <laughs> see how fast it can go okay so that's the fastest it can go absolutely amazing Okay, yeah, it looks like uh, inside of an atom or something. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, there's the link to the calculator, so play around with that. It's quite amazing. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this uh, quite interesting example. And this is to find intersection points because it's very important when you're trying to find the area of polar curves because sometimes you can't just set them equal and solve it. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, hopefully you learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on Steam it. I'll upload those shortly after I upload this video. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.